All right. I think we're going now. I think we're live. All right. Let's get uh, let's get disclaimers out of the way. We'll jump right into this. So this is a, a weekly live broadcast pretty much every Thursday evening, 7 o'clock central. Uh, this is where you'll find me. I don't have a topic planned out. This is just a, an opportunity to interact with everybody on the channel. Um, anybody that's in the live broadcast, I do my best to respond to every comment that comes in during, well, every chat that comes in during the live broadcast itself, unless you're talking to each other, which is fine with me. You guys can have conversations yourself. It's fine. Um, wh what else was I going to say? Oh, <laughs> the only thing, normally, like I say every time, the only things I ask, you guys can ask me anything you want to ask me. We'll talk about anything you want to talk about for the most part. Keep it family friendly. Be polite. Don't be hateful with anybody. There's no reason to call anybody names. We can have friendly disagreements. We can uh, we can have friendly debates. I love a friendly debate. But there's no reason to hate somebody for a difference of opinion. No reason to call them names. Be, you know, be hateful. Any of those kinds of things. So again, keep it family friendly and be polite, or we'll have to kick you out. Looks like we got uh, one of our moderators in here anyway. Um, Verna, Verna, right off the bat. Good evening. Good to see you. She says, 30 eggs in the incubator, jumbo whites. Awesome. Good luck with your hatch. I hope it goes well. Uh, Joyce says, hello from Western Oregon. I have a new egg customer that wants a lot of my eggs for pickling. Well, that's fantastic. Hopefully you're making at least a decent amount of money off of that. Enough to maybe cover your feed cost anyway. That's great news. Hey, Curbside Outdoors from uh, West or Southeast Michigan. Good to see you. Hey, Ed Got Bates here. Good to see you, Ed. And... S.O. Swanson uh, from wet Mississippi Delta. It's wet here, too. It's been kind of just not heavy rain, just misty kind of weird rain that's been going on for the last two days, really. Hey, Whiskey Tango Farms is here. How's it going? Good to see you guys. Uh, let's see where we got here. Porcupine Anchor says, Chris, uh, when you sort out your quail for calling, what trademarks do you use to pick for calling and which one do you pick? Gas, I think that's for breeding stock. Um, good question. I don't, you know, I don't really, you know, it's quite often what I'm doing is I'm just calling a whole, I mean, like a whole handful of them. Once they're aging out, so it's all of them. They're all going to the freezer. Um, I don't necessarily always, you know, like really pay that much attention to them. When I do, though, um, I try. I just really go off of size. That's really it. Uh, the ones that are the biggest ones, of course. I, I, I can't say that only size. There are some things that will get them called quicker, like aggression. If I have a super aggressive bird, that one goes to the freezer. Um, other than that, though, it's just pretty much size. I try to keep the biggest birds and the rest of them go into the freezer. That's really it. Um, there's not really any kind of anything with quail for me that uh, is, you know, any spe anything special. It's just I really just try to make sure the biggest ones, you know, be my future breeding stock and the Smaller ones go to the freezer. Jesse Mills, good to see you. I don't guess you got your previous account thing figured out because you're still you still got the Jesse M Space Ills you know, name, but we know who you are. That's all good. I'm sorry, I'm looking through a couple of things. Hey, well, that's Ed saying good evening. Or he said good evening to you, but that's okay. We'll say it again. Uh, truck three warden evening, Verna. Brandon sent us over. Well, there you go. I didn't, you weren't talking to me, but that's okay. Good to see you. Um, and says Steve, no, I'm uh, oh, you guys are talking to each other. Okay, there we go. Hey, there's Brandon from Whiskey Tango Farms, another moderator for the channel. Says, Good evening, Chris, and everyone else. Good evening to you. Good to see you guys. I missed your live broadcast tonight. Sorry, I was making dinner for my in-laws. I haven't said this actually. My in-laws have moved in with us. It's been several months. I moved in with us. So I was making dinner. Well, no, I wasn't really making dinner. I was cleaning up dinner mess. She made dinner tonight. I was cleaning up their dinner mess for them, like their plates and things like that for them. And missed your live broadcast. Sorry about that. Um, Who else we got here? Nikki James from Central Missouri. Good to see you. Wait, I know Nikki James, don't I? I'm pretty sure I do. I can't, uh, I think I know who you are. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. Took me a minute to register the name, but I, I know who you are. Uh, let's see. Tony from uh, Toronto. Good to see you. Uh, we got a bunch of people in here. Hey, there's Jam and Mike. Good to see you too. Uh, let's see. Lisa says, good night. Two rabbit kindled today. One with five. Okay. Other with eight or nine. Birth in the front of the box. I fixed the cut and covered them she moved them back to the front uncovered is it 
it is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. If they are okay, oh, more than likely they're going to be fine. I mean, if she moved them to the front and they're uncovered, chances are they'll be fine, uh, especially if it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I wouldn't worry too much about them. You could cover them back up if you're worried about it, but you know they tend to kind of self-regulate a little bit. Um, of course, you know with them just being born today, it may be a good idea to go ahead and cover them back up. I don't know that I'd. You don't necessarily have to move them to the back of the box or anything like that. Leave them at the front of the box is fine. Cover them up. Um, they should be okay. They'll tend to burrow down in that straw a little bit. Um, I'm assuming you got straw in your nest box. They'll tend to burrow down in that a little bit if they get too cold. All right. Uh, Brandon says the quail mamas and daddy's calendar went live on our website. Check it out and get yourself one or two and share one. I was going to bring that up. I'm glad you did. Yeah, you got to check it out. I've got to open that up and go look at it. I am in that calendar again this year. Yep, there it is. Sorry, just take a minute. I'll go look more at it later. Hey, Andrew Bailey, good to see you. Lisa uh, says, this is our first litter. Okay, so yeah, again, I, I don't know that I'd stress too much about it, but it might be a good idea to go ahead and cover them back up with the fur that she pulled. Uh, make sure that they you know, stay as warm as they can. And Verna's got both cookbooks on sales for the holidays at, what is that, Quit, Quit K Cookbook? No, wait. Q, oh, Quail in the Kitchen Cookbook. That's what it is. That's a little text. It was hard for me to read. Uh, so yeah, go check that out as well. There's uh, Quail Cookbooks for sale right there. Uh, a couple of great, would make great gifts for the holidays. Uh, Kelly says, uh, hi from South Central Missouri. Good to see you, Kelly. Thanks for joining. Blessed with Pets is here. Says, hey, Chris, trying to think of what I want for Christmas. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, good luck. It's sometimes tricky to, to come up with that, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Miss Kitty from Utah. Good to see you. Bob Cole says, see a couple of watering cups are leaking. Twisted the yellow valve tapper, but still leaking. Um, it's probably has to do, you can take that apart, that little yellow thing out, clean it off real good. If the O ring is still good, there may be something just kind of lodged in there. That's keeping it from, uh, sealing up whenever it's not, whenever it's not depressed and they don't last forever. I mean, I don't know how old these are. If they're very old, you know, you may just need to replace them. Uh, you can get, um, if you can find the right O-rings, you can replace that little rubber O-ring on there. Um, that may help fix that issue. But I've had good luck with taking the cup apart, taking that, you know, completely apart, cleaning it out real good and putting it back together. That That's fixed it a lot of times for me. So you might try that. Um, <laughs> Verna says the, this, the Kui pups are six ounces, were six ounces last week. Six ounces. I don't know how big. I don't know how big they get. So, I'm not sure if six ounces seems pretty small. But who knows? <laughs> but hey, at least they're doing well. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, Nikki James says Nick and Brad. Yeah, I figured that out. It took me just a minute. I'm so bad with names. Forgive me. It took me just a minute, but I I figured it out and placed it. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. I was just thinking about you the other day. All right, curbside outdoor says uh, how much. Wait, how much when you call a bird do you get when you sell them? Um, I don't sell birds all that often. When I do sell them, it you know it depends. It just it's whatever the going rate is in your area. You know, I would just check places like Craigslist, um, see what other people are selling them for. Usually, um, a full grown bird is going to go for about five dollars. Might might be able to get six dollars out of them. Um, you know, they usually go. Like one day olds usually go for about a dollar, dollar fifty, somewhere right around in there. Um, and then once they hit about a week old, then they're about two dollars, two fifty. Once they hit, you know, two weeks old, they're about, you know, three dollars. Well, usually they're about a dollar per week old. They are up until about five weeks, and then they stay at five dollars to six dollars, somewhere right around in there. All right, Katrina says, "Hey, everyone from Gilroy, California, listening." to wait listening to oh listening tonight while i work on projects hey nothing wrong with that thanks for joining us uh let's see blessed with pets says chris do you ever feed what do you ever feel guilty keeping rabbits in small cages i know i do but i just don't have enough room or money to make room make enough large cages for the amount of rabbits i'd like to keep or for it to there's more to that but i don't see where it is i'll get to it here in a minute probably um, no, I don't feel guilty about it. 
you know, I watch my rabbits. They they look perfectly comfortable in their cages. Now, if you look at some of the comments I get on my YouTube channel, um, you know, I'm some people think I'm the devil for keeping my rabbits in wire cages, keeping them in small cages. It's just I'm just abusing my animals. I mean, it's just the comment, the hate comments I get. Um, you would think that uh, you know I, I I'm just a really bad guy, but I don't really feel guilty about it. I watch them pretty closely. I, you know, I make sure they're fed. I, I get in there, I pet them. I give them some attention here and there, but these are meat rabbits. These are not, you know, dainty pet rabbits. They're perfectly accustomed to living in cages. They don't display the signs of, um, you know, what you see when an animal is caged up and is uncomfortable with that, where they, they're pacing back and forth. They don't, they usually, they're just laying around. They're playing with a, you know, the, their chew toys that I have in there, which is usually just a stick or a piece of wood. Um, you know, they're doing something like that sometimes, but most of the time they're just laying around. They're just not really doing much of anything. Um, so no, I don't feel guilty about it. It doesn't bother me. Uh, the op, the other options would be, you know, I get a lot of people that say, you know, <clears throat> I shouldn't keep them on wire that that causes sore hocks, which, you know, it, it can, in some rabbits cause sore hocks. I really kind of believe sore hocks is more of a genetic issue that there are some rabbits that are going to be way more prone to it than other rabbits, especially some of your pet rabbits that have a, you know, a little bit thinner skin on their back feet, a little less fur on their back feet. That's what protects them from that. I give my rabbits resting mats to make sure they can get off the wire if they want to. They, they hardly ever use them, but they're there if they want to use them. Um, the, I forgot what else was. Going. Oh, and if you have them on a solid floor, um, then, then it's, it's incredibly unsanitary um, because they just, I mean, you already know if you have rabbits, they, you know, they, <laughs> They urinate and defecate everywhere, and they're going to be walking around in that stuff, and that's just not good. It's much better to have a wire floor where it's going to fall through for them. Um, I did a video on that several years ago, um, talking about you know a study that was done with rabbits on where they were given the option of being on wire or solid floor, and the majority of the time they preferred the wire flooring. So I, you can look that video up if you want to. I think it was called "Our Wire Floor or Wire Cages Evil." Um, cause I do quote some specific studies and things like that in there. It's not just my opinion. Uh, there are specifics you can go look at if you, you know, really need to or anything like that, but it doesn't bother me because like I said, the rabbits aren't displaying, you know, signs of boredom or, um, you know, like they're agitated or anything like that. Um, all right. That was a long drawn out answer, probably more than what you had, you wanted really, but uh, hopefully I got an answer for you. There's Buster says, uh, been a while since I caught a live. Hi to all. Good to see you, Buster. Thanks for coming back. Uh, Carrie says, uh, hi, guys. Hi, Chris. Well, hello to you, too. And um, where's that? Sorry, I got a couple people talking to each other, so I'm skipping over there. Amy says, 35 feather, feather sexable in the incubator. Happy to catch the live. Well, we're happy to have you here. Good luck with your hatch. I hope it goes well. Um, I don't know if that, when you say 35, 35 eggs that you've got in the incubator or 35 chicks that have hatched and are still in the incubator. Either way, hopefully they all make it. Hopefully you get a great hatch out of it. Um, good luck with that. Uh, Katrina says, uh, let's see, baby bunnies are doing great, except for except the one I found on the wire dead. Not sure how it got out, uh, but she had eight other babies to tend to. Other mama is doing good with her five babies. Well, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. You know, a lot of times um, rabbits can't don't really have the ability. They're not like dogs or cats where they can pick up their babies and carry them around. So, you know, you get a baby that gets out of the nest box, um, especially a very, very young one. Chances are it was probably feeding and she jumped out of the nest box and just got pulled out while it was feeding. You know, it was latched on, um, you know, or it, it, they could wiggle out. They do that sometimes, too. They just get all wiggly and like popcorn and could go right over the side. You know, it could happen. Um, but those are usually um, usually. Uh, caused by, you know, feeding and, and staying latched on when the mother jumps out of the, the nest box. Justin says, hello from Iowa. Got a question. How can I get more out of the, out of my garden without making it bigger? So I don't know how much you're getting out of your garden, what you're doing exactly. Um, you know, the key was, is going to be to, you know, chances are, if you don't want to make it bigger, this makes me think that you need to know, um, you can definitely, you can condense things down quite a bit. You can grow a lot of stuff in a very small space. Um, it depends a lot on what you're growing too. Think vertical, growing vertically, um, and not um, instead of, you know, like in a great big area. 
So things like cucumbers, um, cantaloupe, melons, any of that kind of stuff, grow it up trellises. So it's, you know, straight up and you can grow, you know, eight or nine, you know, well, several cucumber plants in a very small space. They only take up, you know, that much space on the ground. If you grow them up a trellis, the, the growth is vertical. It's not horizontal. It's not out there. Um, you also want to uh, maybe look at, um, well, let's see what else, you know, you could look at like square foot gardening, that kind of thing. Um, you can, you can plant pretty dense, uh, you know, lots of things, pretty dense, pretty close together. Um, if you're growing things like tomatoes, tomatoes usually take up a lot of room, but you can prune them down and train and train them on a string trellis to uh, get them a lot closer together. Um, those are, you know, those are a lot of things that you can do. I don't know if that really answers your question. Um, I don't know if that's what you were talking about as far as like trying to get more things in a smaller space. Um, hopefully that does. If not, you know, ask again or ask another way. I'll, I'll do my best to answer that again. Vern has got a good suggestion too. Have you thought about green towers for your garden? That's a good idea as well. If you're growing things like, you know, lettuce greens, uh, lettuce greens, or, you know, like spinach, or, you know, some of those kinds, several things like that, you could do that. You can grow them in vertical towers where they don't take up much, much ground space, but you get a lot of growing space because you're growing straight up and down. Um, you can grow things like uh, zucchini and summer squash can be grown vertically as well. Basically, you just put a stake and you, you when it, as it grows, you tie it to that stake and, can, and trim off the bottom leaves. And it grows up like this because a lot of times you plant a zucchini plant in your garden and it's, you know, it, it takes up this much room. I mean, it's, they're huge. So you can train those vertically instead of having them kind of snake around and prune off the bottom leaves as they grow. And you basically get like a zucchini tree or a squash tree or something like that. Lots of things like that you can grow vertically. Um, cantaloupe, uh, watermelon, all that stuff can be grown vertically. You may have to get some like old t-shirt material or something like that. Make a sling for the fruit to hold the, you know, the melons themselves so they don't break off the vines when it's grown up a, you know, a, a piece of fence paneling or whatever. Um, just tie it off and support the fruits with that or the, the melons with that. But if you grow, you know, something like a cantaloupe in your garden and you don't trellis it up, I mean, you're looking at eight to 10 feet at least of garden space, probably eight to 10 feet long and, you know, another four or five feet wide. That's a huge amount of space that it's taken up. Whereas if you grow it up a trellis, it's, it's just a couple of feet. I mean, it's just inches, you know, that's it. Um, so those are the, that's the things that I would look at. Bob Cole says brand new. I don't know what that means, Bob, but maybe brand new to the channel, brand new to the live broadcast with us. Either way, thanks for joining us. I'm glad to have you here. Um, Verna is talking about the cooey says the parents are only a little over two ounces, no, two pounds. Sorry. So babies at two weeks weighing six ounces is good. Well, that's good to hear then. I'm glad they're doing well. Uh, Katrina says, Chris, I thought of you when I read the article I posted to your Facebook group, because I remember you doing that with quail, wondering if someone watched that video and tried it with chickens. Yeah, I, I saw that. I actually commented on that Facebook. I, I'm the worst at social media, so don't be offended if you made a post and I'm not, I, I just I just don't do it very often, but I happened to see that one and I commented on it. Um, what you're talking about is the laser pointer with the quail I had in a brooder box one time. They were just chasing it all over the brooder box. It was pretty funny, but it turns out like somebody's used that like they, well, what I read and I didn't read the entire article, I just kind of skimmed it, but it looked like what they were doing was um, they had like an automatic laser thing that was set to entertain chickens basically to give them exercise. So I might get my, everything I understood about it was, it was an automatic thing. It was going to shoot a laser around and the chickens would follow it around and stuff like that. So they get extra exercise. That's, that's what I got. Hey, Jasmine's here says, hello friends tuning in from dreary, rainy Southwest Missouri. Life has not allowed me to join in a while, crazy busy on the homestead and such. Just li listening while I work tonight. That's all right, uh, Jasmine. You are welcome to do that. We're glad you're here either way. Don says, hey, from Central Illinois, just a little late tonight. Hey, that's okay. You know the, the drill. We don't keep attendance here, so we have never would have even known you're late if you didn't tell us. <laughs> and even if you do tell us, we're not upset about that. So Katrina, uh, she's talking to Jasmine. Uh, hey, Psycho Ward's here. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, uh, what else we got here? Katrina says, okay, project time. Listen only now. 
Good luck with your project. Hope it goes red. Hope it goes well. And Vern is going to go get some coffee. <laughs> uh, hey, James Carter. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Here we got Kikari says, uh, let's see, I'm getting stuff together for my first processing day. Uh, what is everyone and Chris's favorite way to hang while processing? I will be going close to 12 weeks, but are older rabbits tougher? Um, I will be going close to, okay. So yeah, I mean, older rabbits can definitely be a little bit tougher. Um, it's not a huge issue, but yes, you, you are going to find that they do tend to be a little bit tougher. 12 weeks is not that old, so you shouldn't really notice much of a difference there. That should be fine. Um, my favorite way to hang them up, what I do is um, I just have, I have a basically a screw screwed into the side of my, my rail on my deck. And um, I tie, I just tie a couple of slip knots at the end of it. I put their feet in the slip knots and uh, well, I put a string over that screw hangs down with some slip knots and I put their feet through the slip knots and tighten it down on their feet. And this is after they're dispatched, of course, but that's my favorite way to hang them up. Um, you know, the other thing too, if you don't know this already, when you are done processing, rest the meat until it has, until rigor mortis has left the meat, until it's no longer stiff, you know, that's usually with rabbits going to take two, three days, you know, something like that, maybe three or four, you know, at the most, you can, you can let it sit. What I do is I let it sit in the fridge. I like to dry age mine. I don't put them in water or salt water or anything like that. I just put them in the fridge in a bowl, lightly covered with something and uh, let them just sit there for, Usually it's about five days because I'm usually processing on one weekend and then getting them all packaged up, put in the freezer the next weekend. But if you don't let the rigor mortis leave the meat, it's going to be incredibly tough. You're going to have less than satisfactory experience with that. So that's a, that's a tip for you. James says, uh, my female gave birth to five bunnies two days ago. Well, awesome. Congratulations. Gordon says, uh, I must be doing something wrong with cooking quail. It comes out tough every time. Should I bring them bring them to room temperature before I cook them for five minutes? Um, probably need to add some fat. Um, also, um, I could go back to that resting the meat before you freeze it or cook it thing as well. If you're not doing that, do that. Quail need a couple of days, you know, about 24 to 48 hours, somewhere around in there. Uh, for you know, after you've processed them, let that meat rest for a while and then cook it. That'll help a little bit with it as well. Add some fat. That's always going to help a little bit. I mean, it's incredibly lean meat. So add some fat. Um, that's going to help with that. Um, it is going to be a little bit on the drier side. Tough makes me think though, that it is, you know, it could be overcooked if you're cooking it too hot, but you're saying you're only cooking them for five minutes, probably not an overcooking issue, but those are my thoughts. You can try brining it. I've never really tried brining quail. I'm not, I don't think it would hurt, uh, but, and bringing them to room temperature, I don't think that's necessary either, really. Um, so those are my thoughts on it. I don't know if one of those things kind of helps out with you there, but uh, if it doesn't, you know, bring it up again. We'll, we'll see what we can figure out. Dawn's got, looks like she's um, referencing you, says, um, I found mine were tough, even roasted or air fried tonight. I breaded and fried breast fillets and legs and thighs, and it was tender and awesome. You know, you, it depends on what you're doing with them too, right? You're right. If you're frying them, now you said you you roasted, oh, even, uh, okay, tonight you breaded and fried them and they were tender and awesome. Well, that's good to know. Um, I do find that the way you cook them does make a little bit of a difference with that too. If you're just cooking it just by, its, it's kind of like rabbit. It does better with a sauce or something like that in there to help kind of keep it a little bit more tender because it is incredibly lean. There's no hardly any fat on them. Um, so those things help as well. I like to do a basic saute with them, um, which I've talked about many, many times. Um, you just kind of lightly bread them, brown them in a skillet, you know, add, make a roux basically with some flour and some butter or, or oil or whatever, cook that till the flour is cooked a little bit, add a little milk, or you could do wine, you can do whatever you want. However you want to make, basically you're making a gravy, put them back in there, onions, you know, mushrooms, whatever you like with it. And then let that slow cook for 15, 20 minutes. And then they're pretty good that way too. Um, and then uh, Verna's got a link to a quail cookbook. Uh, that would help too. James says, uh, T-Y-T-Y. Yeah, she had, I don't know what T-Y-T-Y means. Maybe thank you. Thank you. Yeah. She had eight and did not ache it. What? 
Oh, she had three. She had eight. Three did not make it, I think is what that says. So oh, I'm sorry to hear that three didn't make it, but it happens. It's part of raising animals, unfortunately. Blessed with Pets says, um, I do not believe that wire cages cause sore hawks. I have never had problems with sore hawks till I housed a rabbit on solid floor. And not only did the, he get sore hawks, but he lost a large percentage of fur on his hind end because he would sit in his litter box. So wire floors are, are wire floors as long as the wire is the correct gauge is the most sanitary, but I still sanitary, but I still feel prompted to give them larger cages. You know, there's nothing wrong. If you want to give them larger cages, there's nothing wrong with that at all, but don't feel too guilty about not giving them wire or uh, larger cages. If all you can do is the size cages you have and they're doing okay, they're not, you know, they're not struggling in them, then they're probably okay. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amy says, how do you handle a really aggressive doe? Growling, lunging, biting. Uh, she was a rescue. I've had her for five mu uh, months. A big hutch, not sick, just hateful. I don't have a whole lot of patience for aggression. So if I have an aggressive doe, I have an aggressive quail, I usually just put them in the freezer um, because I just, I don't have a whole lot of patience for it. Now you could try, um, you know, bringing her some treats, find out what she likes. Chances are she's just scared. And I feel bad about that. But at the same time, if I, if I put the effort into calm her down, I start bringing her treats and things like that, and she's still aggressive, then yeah, she's just going to go in the freezer after a while. That's kind of what I do with her. Um, I had a doe for a while that was super aggressive and I ended up getting rid of her. I mean, she was the same way. She'd lunge at you every time you got in the cage. I did get her bread. Um, she was an okay mom. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but, um, but I got sick of it. Eventually I did just, she went to the freezer. Um, Vern is asking the same thing I did. Gordon says, uh, do you let your quail rest after butchering for a couple of days in the freezer? Hey, there's witch doctor says, uh, hi, yeah, just driving home from work and, uh, joining the live broadcast and typing while you're driving on the, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Have a safe trip back. Hopefully it goes well and, uh, uneventful and thanks for joining. Katrina says making garden bigger green stocks. Okay. Make if you want to make your garden bigger, look at green stocks. I can't remember what that is. I know we've talked about that before. Bless with, Oh, wait, where you read that one. And Gordon says, yes, you are resting the meat before you cook it. Mike B says, hit those like guys. Chris is kind enough to help us all. Let's show him. And we appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, Jesse ordered three calendars. Awesome. Andrew says, I have, whoa, I just scrolled too far. There we go. Andrew says, I have 15 quail hens and only getting about three eggs a day and getting 16 hours of light. Any ideas? You know, some, I mean, it depends a little bit on, well, let me back up. This time of year, it's hard to keep them laying even with light on them. The days are just incredibly short. Um, I'm, you know, I'm only getting about four eggs a day right now. Give them a week or two. Try not to pester them too much. Get them stressed out. Chances are within the next two, maybe three weeks at the most, they should they should really start picking up on their egg laying. It really has to do with the lack of light. Even if you are providing supplemental lighting, it's just the days are so short that there's only so much you can do um, to, to keep them laying. Um, and I don't know how bright the lights are or anything like that. That doesn't really make that big of a difference, but that's my thought on it. Um, I have, I, I have an issue. I, you know, I keep lights on my quail, keep them laying and they lay pretty good, but towards the middle to the end of December, all the way up till about the first week or two of January, egg production really slows down if you're keeping them outside. Um, and I think that does have to do with just the, the days getting shorter. I think they can sense that either way. I mean, it's like today was, didn't get light till it was seven o'clock ish, you know, by the time the sun came up and it's down by five 30. So it's, it's, I mean, you're not getting much daylight at all. Mike says jalapeno peppers grow great vertically. I've also had great luck planting herbs in the upside down planters. I used to hang them off our awning. Yeah, that's a good idea too. What are we, I don't know what we're talking about. Verna says, uh, wait, no, Andrew says Verna one to five. I don't know what that is. Verna says three 
per square foot. I, I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> That's okay. James says, uh, yeah, buy 16 foot hog panels that are three foot high and do a seven foot wide path and loop the candle panels over your head. That's a great way. Yeah. You can grow, you know, cantaloupe and, you know, uh, uh, cucumbers, all that kind of stuff up those trellises over the top. Um, pole beans, you know, for sure can go up that, um, lots of things you could do that way. Bob says, watering cups, brand new. Sorry, thought my post would come up sooner. I tried to get them from your affiliate link. Sold out, checked multiple. Oh, no, sold out on the affiliate link. I may have to find another one uh, to post up there. But, yeah, um, checked multiple days. That's okay. I mean, yeah, I appreciate you making that. And, you know, honestly, the way Amazon affiliates work, if you go through my, like, store link to my Amazon shop and then you go in go somewhere else and buy something there. I still get commission for it, I believe. Um, and if I don't, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I appreciate all you guys that do buy through that. Um, I get a little bit of a kickback for it. It doesn't cost anything extra for you. Uh, but there is like a cookie that stays on there. Once you visit my store, if you go somewhere else and buy within a certain amount of time, it still gives credit back to me for that. So either way, um, if you don't want to buy through my store, it doesn't hurt my feelings. It's all good. If you do buy through my store, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Cause I do get a little bit of money off of that. Not much, but a little bit. James says, uh, works wonders for growing long vine, uh, long vine growing. Yeah. Cattle panels would be great for that. Andrew says, uh, well, I have those 19 inch 25 square. F- okay. I don't know what we're talking about. Andrew, I'm a little lost. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I think we're talking about, <clears throat> it looks like Vernus picked up this conversation and I got lost on it. I'm sorry. Are we talking about your birds that aren't laying? Was that you that was saying that? Whose birds weren't laying? That was Andrew. Yeah. Okay. So you've got 19 hens in a 25 square foot. That doesn't, so we're thinking about them being a little bit overcrowded. Maybe I don't think that's, that's not too many. Um, you know, 19, I have those 19 in 25 square foot. I think that's what we're talking about is you've got 19 birds in a 